Last session before lunch, um, we're now going to have a discussion about uh, the biggest country in this region, which is China, uh, and focusing a little bit on what is happening, uh, what's happening in China, because of course what happens there, um, it plays a big role in the, uh, in the overall Asia-Pacific picture. Um, and we already had a little bit of conversation from the Hong Kong session about some of that relationship uh, between the mainland and Hong Kong. Uh, and uh, the suggestion earlier was that the mainland is actually not that anti-LGBT um, and wouldn't sort of stand in the way of Hong Kong making progress. But of course, there are still a lot of challenges um, on the mainland. The, the mainland government does generally avoid um, open discussion or um, advocacy of LGBT rights, so things like same-sex marriage or uh, legal protections from discrimination. Uh, traditional family values are very strong, um, and that can threaten both people's private relationships as well as their um, activities in the public sphere, such as employment. Um, there are some, acti act some activism going on in China, for example, in the, uh, among students and uh, in, in the educational establishments, but also getting pushback. But at the same time, uh, China is an atheist state, so it doesn't have some of the religious underpinnings that, uh, that some other countries do. Um, and it doesn't have as many actively hostile laws um, as, as other places uh, do in Malaysia. So, for example, no outright prohibition. Um, so, what's really going on in China? Uh, how might change happen? Uh, and what can we expect uh, to see in the future? Uh, I'd like to ask my two panelists to come up and join, uh, join me on stage here. We have uh, Jin Jing, who's the artistic director um, of the Jin Jing Dance Theatre in Shanghai. Uh, if she could come up. And also Jia Zibo, the uh, founder of PR Joy. Uh, please come join me on stage. <laughs> so she, Jin, if you take... Here, okay, good. Oh, actually, no, I think you should be, you need to be here. Yeah. So Link is, Link is going to do translation, so uh, yeah, if Link sits at the end, yeah, and you sit down there. Oh. Yeah. I hate this kind of stuff. <laughs> that's that's, yeah, yeah, that's match my for, uh, Just for aesthetic reasons, you can, you can take your badges off on really? stage. Can yeah. I pick <laughs> off this one? So, Jin, um, okay. you work in. Um, well, you have your own dance theatre in, uh, in Shanghai, and so have um, some involvement in both the business and the cultural communities uh, in Shanghai as a, as a result of that. So you know that um, people who are, who are LGBT uh, do, do face some challenges um, in, in Chinese society. They are sort of outside of the, outside of the norm, um, as things currently stand. How does that affect people in China? Well... This question so easy and so sh on the surface. I don't know how many people in this big corporation, how much you know me. Jin Xing, dancer. Have my private company in China, first private modern dance company in China. I founded 1999, it was 20 years this year. But I was the first transgender in this country 24 years ago, proved by the government. Before that, I was the best male dancer. <laughs> Very good story. Only 30 minutes give to me not enough. But before, you, <laughs> bef before your lunch, my story will open your appetite. <laughs> so when I was 18 years old, I was the best male dancer of the country. I was training by the Chinese military group. From nine years old, I joined the military. Extremely trained, the best performer in the country. Served the government, served the military. That time, I was a Concerning myself, maybe I did answer your question, but I gave them stories more interesting. Sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this kind of meeting only gives the concept doesn't work. Share some story, then you bring back, then you know some people live in China like this. I would think I'm not gay. I said, oh my God, my life would be difficult. What can I do in China in the military as a dancer? Then I told myself, get the famous first. <laughs> when you get the famous, people look in your art uh, Achievement, maybe less bad in your personal life. I was completely wrong. Even getting more famous, your personal life getting more under the you know, public eyes. So 18 years old, the best male dancer. Then I was luckily chosen by the government when I was 19 years old, sending me to the United States to study contemporary dance. So I was the first person 
bring back the contemporary land to China, 1994. When I come back to China, actually, I discover myself I should be a woman. And this idea is not come out like this, come out of the air. Actually, when I was six years old, I already know that I should be a woman, but I don't know how. So I wait. From 19 years old, I keep myself in my heart. I said, one day, it's all my dream in the military. Can you imagine military soldier in the military compound? Every night looking at the star, I said, one day I want to have my own dance company. One day I want to become a pretty woman. One day, maybe I become a mother. Maybe I can marry to a decent man. All the fantasy as a 17 years old male soldier in the military. But until today, I did it all. I need applause now. <laughs> it's a fantasy. It's a dr not even a dream, it's a fantasy. But I just thinking, make me so happy. Even in a such a hard environment, you're not allowed to talk about the homosexual LGBT, not allowed, not even mention it, but still that kind of fantasy make me happy. I carry my life going on. Then after I have enough strength, power, can take a full of responsibility for myself, I said, okay, now time back to change myself. I could do that because I live in New York for years, in Europe for years. I can easily do my operation in France, in Belgium, in America. But I'm a very superstitious person. I said, first life, my mom, my parents gave me Chinese. Second time, I gave myself a birth again. I need to go back to China. This ground protect me. Maybe the ideal doesn't right, right, ready yet, but I respect the culture. I think the culture strong, deep enough to holding so many things happening. That's the Chinese culture. So many things that we don't talk about it. It's not that we don't have homosexual or LGBT <coughs> in our ancient culture. In Chinese, we have all. But Chinese mentality, we don't like to talk about it. Everything on the table. On, above the table, everything so peaceful. Completely different from Western concept. Western country love to labelize. Okay, you gay, you are lesbian, you are transsexual. Come on, how are we doing that? That's Western concept. We Chinese don't like that. We have everything but underneath. <laughs> <laughs> if we need something, we bring up one. Ding. If we don't like, put it on the table. We don't have anything. <laughs> That's the Chinese mentality. So you have no Chinese culture until you now influence generation generation by people. So back to my story. <laughs> then, I, 28 years old, I did my operation in Beijing. Of course, it's too much. The best male dancer become a female. And she's also stay in China, developing a contemporary dance, modern dance. It was too much for the government. It's a big taboo. But I want to share with you, choosing a hospital, find a doctor, get my operation down, and all my organs functioning. Even I have sex, I can have an orgasm. That's not important. The most important thing is when I'm out of the hospital the day, the challenging is coming. I have no idea how the society will take me. But from very nine years old, I'm training as a performer on stage. I know how to be the solo performer, deliver the best performance in my life. So I say, okay, I still deliver my personal solo performance as an individual human being, as the first transgender in China. All the powers there are starting. I have a big ego and pride, but that moment, I have no place to performance that. I have a hiding too deeply in my heart then facing all the prejudice. So you're now on top of the table rather than underneath the table. More than that, honey bunny. <laughs> 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 After that, you know, in the lifetime, you cannot ask him too much. Become a pretty woman is my deep wish. But after five years, become a, the woman I want to be, make me very happy and in year 2000, I become a mother. I adopt the three children. <laughs> that time also big taboo. I always, in my life, I'm constantly challenging Chinese society, the boundary. When adopting uh, three children, that time on the national news, people said, oh, she's so selfish. She become a woman and she adopts three children. How can she deal with raising three children? She'll be a horrible mother. And I stand into the media, I said, shut up. I said, uh, Am I a good mother or not? Nobody can talk about it. Nobody, you have no right to criticize about it. Until 20 years later, my children will be tell you I'm a good mother or not. Then, but I take life positive. 
I adopt three children. I think that's the proof by the God, by the life. You are qualified. You're working so hard, been so hard, become yourself, become a woman. I give you three innocent life. Take a responsibility. Complete your woman's idea yourself. I become a very good mother. Even I'm a dancer, I'm still training myself. Same time, I'm a single mother with three kids. That time, 2002, from 2000 until 2004. And I think my, the driven, my power, my energy, I think somehow get touched by the life of God, whatever, send me another gentleman. 2004, I met my husband. And 2005, I married to a German guy. Established a beautiful family together. Now all my children, 19 years old, 17, and 16, happy to live together. Of course, it's not easy. Even I'm, my, my voice, my tongue is very easy, very comical, but it's not easy at all. We have 20 minutes. I can share small stories. If you want to see my more story, end of the year, I have another book writing out. <laughs> How I've been through from 2000 until 2019. All my life as a Chinese independent performer and a mother of three, transgender, private company director, anyway. But before 2011, I'm just a mother of three transgender and dance company artistic director. Now I become so well known in China. All over Chinese, internationally, whole world of Chinese knows me. Why? From 2011, I become a TV host. I have a very sharp mouth, very quick mind, and deep power. So that time I run my independent modern dance company, I have no funding. This company, I have no background. Somebody sponsored me. No, you are a private running by yourself. Already too much. You by yourself, you're transgender, running modern dance company. Okay, how you can survive? Then I said, fine. But of course, very tough. Then I said, right, let's enter the business of TV. But the funny things, many, many years ago, when one day I was talking with my girlfriend. I said, you know, one day China open, if it's on the TV, they have a talk show, I'll be the first talk show lady. And all my girlfriends said, shut up. Never happened in China. TV, like you, you kind of person. I said, what do you mean what my kind of person? Transgender, gay people on TV, never in China. I said, you never know. The time will be changing, open up. So 2011, and entered the TV business, become a TV, you know, the, we have so many TV shows, reality shows, so you think you can dance, dance with a star, this kind of program. I was the judge, because from my profession, I was a judge. But I was, the, I was a very, Strict, tough, they call me the Simon Cowell of China. Po they gave me the name called the Poison Town. My town have a poison, but uh, some people love it, some people hate it. In 2015, I established my own talk show on air. First the talk show in China, every Wednesday night from 2015. My viewer, every Wednesday and Thursday, all over the world, the whole 200 million Chinese people watching my show. Wow. Really scary. Then 2017, September, my show, without any announcement, quietly take out. You're not allowed to talk anymore. Fine. They call me the Opera Winfrey of China. I got the title, Opera Winfrey of China. I said, fine. Of course, the person speaking out freely. Same time, I'm with my government. We do, we're doing a multi-favor. They use me as an example. See, we have a free person like Jinxing, LGBT transgender, free speaking person, modern dancer, blah, 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 blah. But same time, no comment, no supporting, nothing. That's what I'm facing. You take this prejudice or you take, take something, I don't know. But I think I often tell myself, I very often get the letter from the LGBT group, say, Madam Jin, please do something for the gay right, lesbian right, LGBT. I say, no. I said, I know my environment. I know my country. I don't need the fighting. Also, I want to tell all my gay friends, lesbian friends, transgender friends, I said, in the life, complaining, whining doesn't help. Stick to it. Do your best. Use your action. Use your work. Convince people. After I had delivering a talk show, I had so many friends, fans come to me and say, you know, Madame Jean, before we hate you, I said, why you hate me? Because you are transgender. Okay, then, she said, no, we love you. I said, fine, take your time. I often talk to Chinese public. If you appreciate what are my decision, individual choices, I appreciate it. If you don't get it, you hate it, fine, that's your business. Next life, see you next life. 
<laughs> let me um, let me bring in Jia on on that angle. So you've spoken about so rude. Stop me like uh, this. <laughs> <laughs> you've spoken about the I guess the relatively unaccepting culture in China and some of the. I mean, I guess you pushed through some of the challenges um, and built a built some sort of public persona and probably changed some attitudes on that. So. Jia, you work in the in, in PR industry. Um, I wonder if you could give us a perspective from the um, the personal lives of LGBT people in China. How do individual LGBT people deal with love and relationships in that Chinese context where it's less less supportive outside of the in, in the external environment? Uh,就是说，就是在中国呢，这个彩虹人群啊，接受了很多的各方面的挑战。就是你作为一个这个PR,就是公关公司的一个工作室的一个创业家,你从个人的角度可以聊一下,就是你是怎么看待就是这个彩虹人群对于爱情啊,对于这个亲子各种关系,在这样子的环境下你的看法。其实我
呃一些客户的一些活动里面呢去植入，呃，包括 gay 的一些相亲的活动啊，包括一些呃比较有话题点，可能会凸显品牌特性的一些彩虹一些呃元素加入进去。So um. Well, I'm working in the PR industry, where which requires a lot of advanced thinking and also branding require requirement. So in this process, a lot of clients requested me, "Can you um, um, assign one of your uh, LGBT colleagues to work for us?" And I say, "Yeah, sure. Why not? I am one of them um, because um, in." In this industry, um, LGBT group are associated with being very trendy, very keep up with what's going on in the world. So facing all this request, um, so what I'm doing is that um, to, in accordance with the, the principle of the branding, I also try to include as much as possible of um, LGBT people. So for example, I, I coordinated um, speed dating for uh, gay men in China before. So this kind of activities, I'm trying to um, influence my clients. Okay. I've got um, some more things that uh, I would follow up and ask, but I know the audience has had some extra questions from the last few sessions, so I'm just going to come to the audience a bit earlier than usual, just to uh, make sure that we get the chance to fit a few in. Does anybody want to jump in with any uh, questions for either Jin or Jia? Oh, lots over there. Okay, um, let's start at the back, and then we'll come forward to the the Gilead table. Yeah. Hi, my name is Ying. I'm I'm the director of Beijing LGBT Center. So actually, I have a question for Miss Mi, uh, Madam Jingxin. And actually, uh, in China, we have a research on transgender people, and we found that almost uh, ninety percent of transgender people they suffer domestic violence. And uh, uh, right now, you mentioned that as a celebrity, you think it's very difficult for you to say yes to LGBT organizations. But I think still we need to do something for our community. So my question is uh, for you, do you think there is any possibility for a celebrity to work with LGBT NGO in China? And actually, uh, before you answer the question, I also want to provide some data. Um, to our participants. Actually, we did a survey on LGBT community in 2016 with UNDP and the Peking University. And we found that in China, only 5% of LGBT people, they are out uh, in their life completely. And in workplace, only 5.1% of LGBT people, they are out. This data shows that um, most of LGBT people in China, they feel unsafe. So that's why they try to live as street people, cisgender people. But uh, actually, uh, in these 20 years, we made many uh, process on the LGBT rights. For example, like before, it's very difficult for transgender people to find an LGBT-friendly doctor in mainland China. But last year, our center, along with other transgender organization, we, ho we held the very first uh, LGBT-friendly medical care providers to have a meeting to talk about how we could support LGBT, especially transgender people in mainland China. And also in 2014, we won the first case on anti-gay conversing therapy. So actually we achieved lots of milestones, but because we have this kind of censorship in China, so lots of uh, Chinese people, uh, even LGBT people, they didn't know what it happened, what is happening in China. Right, so both some s private and public censorship going on. You can you pass the microphone just forward um, to the man in the yellow tie. I'll just take two questions and then we can, we can take them jointly. Thank you very much. I'm uh, Reggie Ho. I'm from Pink Alliance, which is a uh, Hong Kong-based LGBT plus charity. Um, <coughs> we primarily, we serve people in Hong Kong, but we also pay a lot of attention to China. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and last year, we actually had uh, a forum uh, with two activists from China at our uh, annual Diversity and Inclusion Festival Pink Season. And they shared what we're doing in Wuhan and Xiamen. <coughs> and we were surprised by how much is actually happening in China. In different cities, there's a lot of vibrancy, but the situation is also very opaque. And they always have to toe a lot of lines, they have to be careful not to be too out, not to where, where, they, where anything is held, how they promote it. It just seems like that 
there is still a lot of kind of fear that sometimes you get cracked down, sometimes you get raided. You just never know what's going to happen next. So my question is, as a Hong Kong-based LGBT plus charity, we really do want to pay more attention. We do want to help. We do want to communicate more. What can we do to really kind of assist or support or anything that we can do to facilitate the progress of LGBT plus equal rights in China? Okay, so yeah, so what, 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 how can Hong Kong organizations work with mainland ones? Um, either of you like to jump in with, with a response to either of the questions? Yeah,要不我先翻译一下。第二个问题是问您的。第二个问题我翻译一下。就是,呃,就是这位先生,他是这个香港,呃,彩虹人群的一个,呃,一个机构的代表。他就是说,他之前跟,呃,就是大陆
So I'm a, maybe the life training uh, begin as a soldier. I'm a, I still have a soldier spirit in China, <laughs> fighting it, standing there. So that's the attitude I'm carrying on in China. We're, we're really talking about different environment, different stories. I think all kind of outside of China have activities, our events, but in China it cannot happen. Just take time, be there, be yourself. But don't whining, don't complaining, do your best, use your action to convince the society you deserve equal respect as any other human being. That's my attitude turning to it. Really. We're, um, we're going a little bit over, but I'm going to, unless one of the organizers sort of um, rugby tackles me off stage, I'm going to eat into lunchtime by about 10 minutes. We've got an hour and a quarter, so I'm going to cut it down. Do an hour, I guess if you're desperate, you can leave, but uh, otherwise you'll still have an hour for lunch if, uh, I I if I run us over. Um, Gia, do you want to respond to any of the quest those two questions? Uh, then I'll come back to the audience.刚才这位先生说到的那个在大陆去推广这个难度。怎么讲呢？就是不仅是您遇到了我们，其实在日常的工作当中也会经常遇到，而且这个尺度和底线其实我们也在不停的去嗯小非常小心的去把握，因为之前我不知道您清不清楚，在微博上曾经有过大规模
I, I, because at this time I participate in this uh, conference, why? They invite me as an economist, this magazine. This magazine two years ago almost put me in the huge trouble. <laughs> who running the magazine, who working for the magazine, I have a slow, small complaining about it. Because this magazine is a very powerful magazine. Our government really looking for this magazine. You know, they censored target. They can't say it, it's banned. No, listen. <laughs> then, two years ago, they uh, running an article about me, about my success, about, about my talk show, influence, about program, everything. And last sentence, because they never interviewed me, they just put something together, collecting some information, put it together. But very dangerous word. In 2004, I published my novel. The end of my, no my autobiography, my autobiography, I, and I said, as an actress, if I ask me to play certain character, I would love to play two historical ladies, you know, character. Who? One is a Sai Jinghua historical character. For actress, very interesting play because the character is very controversial. And uh, maybe the Madame Mao. You know Madame Mao? I said, this woman, as an actress, if I play a movie role, very interesting character, I, I would love to play this character. But economists, they twist it. They said, uh, Madame Jin's icon is Madame Mao. Oh. Uh-oh. Gotcha. They almost stopped my show in next week because in Economist the interview article about Madame Jean, she said her icon was Madame Mao. Excuse me, you guys really know how to, <laughs> you guys really know how to write. <laughs> they twist it. Then I have the government come to me, check it out. I said, look, my autobiography writing like this. They did an interview. I have no interview with economy. They just twist it. Look, then prove by the government I can continue to get on the air. See? Do some professional job. Interview first. Don't write. <laughs> 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 Shit. The, um, the, the That's first why I can continue to finish the conversation. I know it's, we're running eight minutes late, but I'm so happy I have such a meeting in Hong Kong for the LGBT group. I think China takes a slow pace, and as a lot of people standing together. It's a huge nation, hu huge country. We never give up. Actually, people said, why don't, Madam you're so strongly standing there. I said, I'm committed to my life. People still target me. They don't target my uh, success of a talk show host or dance artist. They always target me. You are transgender, you are transgender. They think this is my weak point of my life. But I'm so proud of to announce to whole Chinese people, I said, listen, I'm become a transgender. It's a gift from life. It's a gift from God. I experienced a 28 years male's experience. Now I've become a perfect woman I want to be. I have both world experience. Who can compare with me? I, I, I'm the child of God. I said, you should envy me, not just target me, give me a break. Then I said, that's why my attitude turning to this continue. Don't give up. Also, I tell all my gay friends, lesbian friends, transgender, I said, uh, if you look at me as an icon or idol, whatever, I'm within the icon hotel. I said, uh, <laughs> I'm the only icon here, I know. <laughs> Just like, but I know in what kind of environment, do the correct performance. Time to shut up, just shut up. Time to talk, just talk. Time to move, just move. You need to find the right moment to do your work. You cannot like just like, because outside have a, you know, same thing, you try to do the same thing, we cannot. So time will tell you what's the right moment for the right move. And That's so as I mean. a, just as if, we, if I just ask you each for a closing, a closing oh. kind of thought, um, what is the next move in China? What do you think the next step will be for LGBT rights? I think now China is facing more big challenges instead of the LGBT group. Stop the trading world, bloody trading world, make the whole world noisy. People have no pay attention to this, to, to LGBT group. But I think for people, just keep yourself pride. Don't easily give up. And just like, like Ms. Sui sitting here, all so many groups, like the lady mentioned, that so many group, NGO group, slowly pushing it. I think for the bigger cooperation, I I'm completely agree with the gentleman from Taiwan before the section he talked about. It. For the bigger cooperation, don't ask people, let it be. That's why I said I always share the song of by the Beatles. Just let it be, people. People who they are, just let them be themselves. If you don't like, if they are not qualified to work for your company as an 
ability, fine. But don't judge people by he or her sexuality or the individual choices. If such a big corporate company, you still narrow mind like this, I think a company going to finish quite soon. I think in this 21st century, if you want to be success, be a success company, success or personality, I think you need to have the union sex mentality and view about all kinds of sexuality to dealing with it, accept it, not to against it. If you don't get it, you don't, fine, give some space. Everybody has your own way of dealing with life. That's what's beautiful about this world. You don't like me, you pick another train, I take this bus. What's the big deal? Okay. That's it. Um, Time up. I'm hungry. Let's go. Jia, <laughs> <laughs> okay. would you like to give us uh, any, a closing thought? Uh, uh, I'm就在最后你有什么想要跟大家说的吗？呃，我觉得其实我们每个人就是作为，特别是作为彩虹人群啊，我们其实都肩负着一份责任。我临我临来之前呢，有一个好朋友跟我讲，他说：“哎，我